Hello. <coughs> Sorry. Hello. And welcome to uh, Tanks TV. Uh, thank you for joining. I tried uh, sharing it a bit before so we could have a few people on. See if there's already a fair, fair few what's uh, come on. So, uh, in the red corner, hi. Uh, thanks for joining. So, this is a bit of a follow up uh, from what Luke did yesterday. Um, I know we were discussing roundabout with uh, manager situations, what are we doing? Betting odds and this other. I want to go a bit more in depth about it. Uh, picked out top candidates, what I seem to be running at the minute. Uh, Public Jacks. Bonjour, bonjour, my friend. Um, nice to have you on board. Uh, like I say, it's following up, it's a uh, change in progress. Uh, what's happening at Oakwell? Uh, so, been strong rumours going about it, manager or managers, head coaches, what you want to be looking at, which direction you're going to be going. Luke touched upon a few things yesterday with players being had some time off, a bit of a weird decision, but I was given that choice and we'll be looking into that and possible, you know, always made that call uh, regarding managers, head coaches coming into club, uh, what's the, you know, the process, what's going to be done. When's it going to be done? Um, so you look at some other clubs that have been uh, without managers have acted pretty pretty quick. Uh, Cardiff probably after Michael Flynn. Uh, what you know, but Book is strongly linked with us as well. So we're going to be going into um, in depth on some managers. Again, if you're new to this channel, uh, please thank you for uh, joining, um, having a look. Um, it's going to be a banter, we're going to get around to other uh, fans and uh, progress and stuff like that. Uh, so thanks guys for watching, uh, keep on watching, it's going to be a bit of fun, a bit of a banter. Uh, there's no tell on really to do, international break, so I appreciate it for hanging about and all your comments. I will uh, read comments and I will get back to you. Uh, so Samuel, who would you prefer to become the new Barnsley manager? <coughs> um, my own opinion, I'd like to have... Uh, Alex Neal. Um, if not Alex Neal, then it'd be Michael Flynn. Two reasons that we both got an understanding of English game and what it takes to be in the championship. Um, Michael Flynn in Newport County, a bit lower down than us, but he's got a good reputation. When you look at his CV and about what he's done, he's had to work with at Newport. I would regard as a manager. That's why he's been strongly linked with to Cardiff City. And I do believe I read in reports that he was at the Cardiff game on the weekend just gone. Um, he was just he was he was looking at their game, so read what you want into that. Um Alex Neal for me is the um not only because he's like an ex player on loan kind of thing, what we had, but he also worked within a similar setup at Preston with the young players and stuff like that. Um, I think it would actually done to, to get to get rid of, but each club has their own uh, opinions on that kind of thing. But Alex Neal, I think he'd do well. Um, I think he'd bring some kind of stability into the club. He'd also have some kind of direction of purpose. Whether he'd be allowed to do that with the ball that we've got at the minute, when we're wanting to say we only want to play young players and you know we don't want experience. And, but... We've got to start now. This is the time now. We've got to have his own identity. And we don't want to be going to the same role as that every September, every October, November, looking for another manager, whether it be they've left because they've had an absolutely fantastic season or they've left because they've done shit, basically. Uh, so for me, Alex Neal, I think it'd be. Uh, I know he's been like in media, he's done stuff, a lot of stuff like that, but when you see him like on a uh, football show with Sky covering championship and that, he's still in the game, he's having a knowledge. Um, I would... I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that coming in. And you've also got to look at the back, back room. Would be allowed to bring, bring his own men in, his own backroom staff. Shot wasn't under different circumstances, obviously with Brexit and visas and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to, it could get a bit messy that way. Um, so my own opinion is to be Alex Neal. I know there'll be loads of others out there. Um, like I said, I'm going to run through top six, five or six in betting and give my own opinion on it, to be fair. You might agree, you might disagree. So it's all about opinions. 
uh, you might chuck another name in and we could discuss that. So as evening goes on, we'll I'll have a go at that. All right. Uh, but I can't not film for me. Alex Neil, if uh, we're going British, although I think it's going to be a foreign one. Me too, to be to be fair. Um, when you look at the record, well, I haven't got notes against foreign managers. I just think it'd be an easier transition um, for a manager who also knows the league. If you're going for a foreign manager, just what like uh, TJ said, Daniel Farke, Farke, I want to say it. Um, he'd done well at Norwich. Again, he knows that what it takes to get out of a championship and we could go on a few managers with that. The sustainability would be longevity or short term. If I could see Daniel coming in, but as soon as another fashionable club comes in for him, knowing our ball will have a release clause like the Dishmail, they'll meet that and he'll go. What are we wanting? Are we wanting a manager what's going to come in? And he's got to get backed. That's the main thing. Under shop, I don't think, and I think the vast majority of fans would agree with this, is that we didn't really strengthen in the summer and back him. If you don't back a manager, then I expect to work and progress. Missed an ideal opportunity last season. Yep, Mowat went, Solbar went, DK went back to America. But when you look at the recruitment side, what we brought in, we didn't replace anybody with no disrespect to players that we brought in. But we didn't replace them. We replaced with them with people, players, what I've got to get up to that standard. Uh, became went out on Oxford. So we'll have a bit of discussion about the transfer side. So I'll try and keep it on here. Stephen Berkershaw, honest assessment from yourself, mate. How come to you in the percentage terms, but we'll turn the ship around and stay up? Personally, I'm 50 50. Um, well, just there's rumours going about as well that Dab set. Derby County are going to get a, a, another point deduction. Uh, I think it's nine points deduction. There's something like that. Uh, that's up in the last few hours today. So if that means that, that'll be, I think they'll be on minus three points, which will be 14 points behind us. But we can't be relying on that because we're going to be going back to the situation when we stayed up. If you understand what I mean, is we can't be we can't be relying on other teams if dropping points are going to. We've got to be reliant on Barnsley. Barnsley got to be reliant on their results when they cross that white line. They've got to be really dependent. Yeah, you got you're you're just going to get it last game of season kind of thing where you got to play and we could do with that. That's part and parcel. But this stage of season, we can't be saying, oh, we're relying on them to lose this, them to lose that. Yeah, we've got to. Other teams will take care of that. We've got to take care of ourselves. As soon as them players cross that white line, they need to have a look at the in the mirror and say, right, we well, need to do this. Forget about what other teams are playing in the championship. We've got to do our job. And that's where it stems from. Uh, so percentage terms, it all depends, uh, Stephen. The, the recruitment side, we go back to the manager and would that manager or head coach be allowed to do what he would got to do, i.e. change formation? Bring players in that he wants to do. Yeah. Um, at this moment in time, without a manager, I'm going to say I'm 70%. 70%. But, like I said, if we brought in a, a manager that's going to know what he's going to be doing. I can't see why not, because I think there's 87 points to still play for. But like I said, we don't need to be cutting adrift from from that. We need to be getting out of the bottom three come end of this year. Come, come December, we need to be out of here, in my eyes, because then we've got FA Cup coming up, fixture going to be coming up, Christmas period is going to be coming up, it's going to be fat, thick and fast. Yeah, so in my my opinion... We need recruitment's crucial and needs to be hit the ground running and it needs to be able to do what he's got to do and put his own stamp on, on this club. Because at this, this moment in time, we have, we have got no real identity. Teams used to be fearful coming to Oakwell and play, play us. Now they're coming to Oakwell and it's like, it's coming to Oakwell. We need to make it back a fortress. But at this moment in time, I don't, I don't think us as fans are players you know, it's just expecting the unexpected because we know what it's going to be. 
So you're 50 50, I'm 70 percent. Yeah, but again, it could be depending on uh recruitment. Who we get as a manager, head coach. I'll say manager, I'm not keep going to head coach, I'm out of school. I'm going to say manager. Uh, Andrew, I totally agree with me. Uh, Alex Neal would be a perfect fit champion experience and manager club similar to us in back Preston. Yeah, he did. And I, I, I've just gone back. Is is that he also had a stint at Norwich. So he's, he, he's known to this league. He does know what it's about. He, he knows what the English game's about. And for me, he's not at a club, so there'll be no fees or get out clause and all this, what you've got to do. My opinion, Alex Neal. Uh, Richard, all about the board, mate. They're just coming to fans of Richard's owners of the league. Spent nothing on their own money. What's it saying? It but where it's gone. So, yeah, I totally agree with you, mate. Um, it just seems to be at minute, at minute that they're treating it like uh, a portfolio. It's another, it's another club to add for, to the little collection and to make money from and move on. It's profit, it's all money. When they first come in, and I, I remember seeing it, and we were all sat down on the table and introducing themselves, and we're going to invest, we're going to do this big plans, and yeah, fair enough, COVID it, and it affects everybody, I get that. But it still doesn't stop them from investing and taking into account what, what's been achieved, what's happening. You'll look back on um, last season, when you've got CEO coming out saying that he wants a really successful season. Because we haven't sold players for X Map. But we finished fifth in the league. Yeah, we had a Ishmael came in, took us at Scruff at Neck. He, he, what 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 are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to a successful season, see if you can sell a player for X amount of millions and that's successful. It in you know, doesn't it work both ways? What's happening on the pitch? If you're in a successful team, then surely that player's gonna be worth even more. So you've got to invest a bit to take a bit. We all know as Barnes fans what's going to happen to players. That I ain't got a problem with any player coming in and then moving on to bigger and better things. John Stones, for example, yeah. Conor Ruran went to Aston Villa for millions, and it hasn't worked out for him in one thing or another. Yeah, he could go back to James Bree. He can go back to other players. Yeah. They, they'll always move on. The grass is always green on the other side, but a lot of that as well is the agent. Yeah, if they're unhappy at the club, Alex Moore's situation, according to Dave Murphy, we tried everything what we could do and to keep hold of him. But back in my mind, if we weren't going to go up or we weren't going to achieve all, then he were going to go. And could you blame him, lad? Not really. He's been a servant to us. He's been a servant to us. He's done... He's done what everybody else would do. If you were in the same job and you're going to go, someone's going to cover and not offer that, reluctantly you're going to go. Yeah, it's that stage of career. Plus, what you've also got to remember is that the club's policy is that they want young players. And as old as what more it is, what he deemed as too old. That's another thing, you know what I mean? But we can't be just relying on young players. Oh, we might be just playing it under 23 league. And, you know, it's going to tell on pitch. It shows on pitch. Sometimes, and it's not just to play, it's men against boys. And the game muscled off. It's the game tactics. The older reds were a bit wiser to buy a tackle, to buy a foul, get refs here. And when you look at some of our players, they're a bit naive. And they'll go mouthing off at referee, but then they'll get a silly booking for it. You look at the older experienced players, they know when to get referee a bit of mouth. They know when to get to on shirt and to yellow. Yeah, whereas us, we're that naive and we argue, we get frustrated and we get a booking for light descent. And that's the experience on the pitch. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I went on a bit of ramble there, but I will come back to your comments. I will come back to your comments. Uh, Steve Birkinshaw, agree, mate. All depends on the disappointment. Guaranteed. Guaranteed, mate. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what messages uh, come through with, um, with, with our opinions because, you know, it is our club. Um, if there's any fans on from any other um, teams, you know, what would you say? Are you happy at your situation, current situation? So it's just a bit of an answer. So, uh, agree, mate. All depends on disappointment. 
So, Steve, um, who would you like to see come in? Who would be, realistically, who would you like to see come in? And we'll get back to them and discuss. Uh, and two of the others, Eki. I can't see him coming back, to be fair. Uh, Paul Eki bottom. Uh, shame. I think he knew under the current regime what's here now. Because at one point, he was running more or less all club on his own. Because uh, it was around about time when... Uh, Mr. Crying, unfortunately, um, you know, passed away kind of thing and he was around to deal with a lot of stuff, Paul. Um, so for, I think, a fair few months, we were dealing with all else, everything. Uh, Eki, we were dealing with transfers, we were dealing with running a club kind of thing, team affairs. And when they came in for him, they probably offered him trebled his wage. I, I, I'm just surmising. They've offered, got to have offered him better terms, and he took took it. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out for him, and he's been to a few different clubs in in, in meantime. Um, would I could come back? No, I can't see him coming back, mate. I can't see him coming back. Um, I don't think he'd come back and work for the board as such, because he wanted. He wanted certain reassurances back then, so that was changed. I think he felt it's got it's got worse. To be fair, we backing and you look at managers after well, how many's come and gone since that. Mister Barclough, yes, agree, mate. There's no ambition there at all. Do more than I'm than good. Yeah, exactly, mate. More I'm than good. Uh, Mister Big, would you not consider Neil Warner till the end of the season? I would personally. Yeah, I would. I would, but I don't think he'd go down hell with Bird. I think Bo would be, I think would be a clash of personalities there. Definitely a clash of personalities there because Neil Warner wouldn't take no shit. He'd come in, take it with scruff at neck and he'd, he'd rule it with an iron rod. And to be fair, I think that's what it needs. That's what it needs. Um, I know he's got a soft spot for Barnsley, Neil Warner. Would he come? I think he would. Would he bring his assistant, Kevin Blackball and that? Yeah, I think he would. You know, Yorkshire. Um, and, God, Christ. If he didn't know English game, then, you know, what it takes to get in, you know, out in it, then, yeah, I can't. I can't see him coming. But I, I would. Here's your go. You've got a short-term contract. Keep his up, mate. Well, your oyster. He'd do it. I can guarantee he'd do it. Because he'd know what it takes. And he won't take no shit. And that's from board and all. <laughs> so I can't see it working, to be fair. And we get on about Clash of Personalities via. If he wanted a player, he'd want that player. You know, so it's a be interesting. It'd be interesting one back. Uh, Andrew Denham, the board also need to change and bring experienced players to help young ones grow. Surely it would benefit everyone. Exactly, mate. You'd, you'd think so, wouldn't you? You'd think so. Um, I think they missed a trick on that because you always need experience in, in whatever like, role you do. Whether it be work, man, your work, or a football pitch, whatever you need, you need experience. You look at your young managers what are coming up. They've always got experienced person as a number two or an assistant in the background of a coaching staff. You need that experience there, no matter what you do. Because they've been in the game, they've got the knowledge, they've learned from up above. So they're going to pass it on to you, you can pick up from that. So in my position, I go back years and years, and there's always been like there's, there's never been like a a boss younger than me. And if it has, they've had to learn it from someone else. So you know what I mean? It's like that that position you you, you don't need you don't need experience, and it's not just on the football pitch; it's on the training pitch as well. You look at Solbar when he came in, having a word with young kids, civic, having a word in their ear, calm stuff. It's experience, he knows the game. He might not be quickest, but he's got a footballing brain and he can read the situation. Yeah. He could give a free kick away a foul on halfway line before it even develops and comes down further down to hurt us for a free kick. You know what I mean? You need that experience. But with this board either they're gonna go, they're just wanting to get no players under is it twenty five? Oh, really? But then when we're on about developing captains, we want a captain to start off young and build and develop him and let him mature. 
I've got to mature when we get to 25 and we said, you know what? We're cashing on you. You need experience. You need experience of a park. Totally agree, mate. It's going to be a win-win for owners. It's going to be a win-win. Because like I said, and you're, you're, you're watching, you are see it. They're going to be... It's going to be a benefit on the team because they're going to be doing well. So if they're going to be doing well, the, the their investments, the players, are going to go up in price. So if they go up in price, look at this for a portfolio and that. Look at these as our investments. Because fast, we don't look at them as players. We look at them as an investment to see what they can buy to, to see what profit we imagine we can make on it. Yeah, so you're working whatever walk of life you're working a warehouse or you're working a shop. You're always trying to get the best product for the best price. And then you're hoping for it to get better or go up in price and you make your profit on it. It's only the same with football with these guys. Yeah, it's a business, but it's our club. And what we can see on our club is that it's going down. There's, there's, no, there's no structure, there's no identity. I keep saying identity a lot, but what is what is our what is our identity? Is it just to fetch players in from this money ball method? Unknowns. It's not a respect to players, but we we get a player in. He has a season or two years, it, it does well, and we've trebled his price and he moves on and someone else comes in. But was that many gaining money getting invested? That money's not getting invested in the squad. Because you're just replacing light for light with the money, the least amount of money. So where's the rest of it going? Yeah. Um, Mr. Big... Sorry, I'm just going back. So I don't, I'm trying to answer everybody's... Uh, owners, Steve Edgehart. Jim Poyman would have been wilder, yeah. But uh, realistically, it would be foreign employment, not from there. Just someone with some passion and a plan we can all get behind. Exactly. Realistically, I think the vast majority of fans at one point who won't bet any war, like more or less either favourite or second favourite. Middlesbrough came along, no messing about, saw opportunity and took it. All right, guys, let's have a drink. And so, uh, got opportunity, saw it, went in, done. I don't think it would hate how they handled it, to be fair. Uh, what I've heard and what I've read is that they offered... They told Neil Warnock on the morning before the game that this would be his last game, he was relieved and he accepted it. And then all of a sudden that came in. I think that was a bit hard to order, like. Um, I think there's a way of doing things, but to actually tell him morning before you're going to do something. Yeah, not not great. Look, and like I said, whoever comes in, I'll, you know, we've got to get behind, we've got to back him. It's, it's our club, we want to do well. But it always seems to be we've got all of his plans set out, but nobody really knows that plan apart from them. But then we're all second guessing, then, oh, yeah, we can go there. You look at other clubs, how quickly they've appointed managers. Dum, bam, done. We're still waiting, and there's guessing, and there's favourites in bookmakers, and it's going up and down, up, down, up, down. You know, so in a minute, I'll come back on that. Uh, Liz Red. Hi, Liz. I was just thinking the same as Mr. Big One to keep up as by, by the way. You know, you're good to listen to Top Man. Thank you, Liz. I appreciate that. Um, I try, I try to talk sense. I don't, some people might agree or disagree on that one, but um, I'm passionate about the club, our club. Um, that's what it's all about, really. Just having a banter, saying it how it is, being real, being realistic. That's what it's all about, being realistic. I think there's no point in saying something and it's going to be completely false. So it's just keeping it real and realistic. Okay. Thank you, Liz. So I'm just going to have a quick look on bed, uh, betting sites and stuff like that. Uh, at minute, Michael Flynn is 10 to 11 on some bookmakers. Again, he's been strongly linked with Cardiff and I can personally see him going to Cardiff uh, for how long it's been taking. Would he come? I think he would come. But the thing was, is how long would he come for? Would he be allowed to do what he's got to do? Or would he be under certain restrictions? Um, bit of debate on that one. Uh, Joel Lauman, three to one, second favourite. 
like Joe a lot. The only problem I could see being there is that it's going to be for some, not all players, but some players a bit too comfortable, a bit too uh, relaxed for them, if it makes sense. I think you need someone to come in and shake it up, make players aware of what's happening. Because after all City's performance, wow. Um, I, I won't expect that. I was expecting this to move on, which brings to Derby game. Well, that just like a relief game for players because of all the pressure and that what they had round under previous Manchester shot. Well, that just uh, go out and play. And obviously, we, we played absolutely fantastic. A lot, best game we played for quite some while. And it's just a uh, coincidence that it were under uh, Joe that we played more or less with the same players. Yeah, we. Come down from one now. Move on from that, and then we go to all game. 10, 15 minutes after that, it well, wow, completely different. Is this more or less same side of it? Well, you know, a couple of changes. <sighs> Unbelievable. Someone is no. Oh, I'm gonna. I won't say defending, but I think all the way through parts. Be fair. Wow. Wow. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. So for for me, I wouldn't have Joe. Joe, um, I'd still try and keep him front to stop here. Well, it depends on the manager, but I think it could be too comfy for players what we've got here. Um, and so he's coming and give it a big shake up. Third favorite, Hans Wolf, seventy two. Um, beginning at weekend, I think it was something like about sixteen to one. But the links, I know it was on some Twitter sites last night. But apparently they're talking to him. But what I can believe is part of the German under nineteen um, management set up as a manager, and I think he's one five drawn one, something like that. A pretty decent record, and he's only recently in that position. Would he want to move and come? Yeah, I know we've been after him uh, for quite some time. I think this is third time we've been in for him. So, would he want to come in and take over a side where it is and be allowed to do what he wants to do? Or would he rather stay in Germany doing the under-19s? Another thing we got to look on that is, would he be, be allowed to bring his own backroom staff in as well, his coaching set up? Like I said, go back to Brexit and all that kind of uh, stuff with the visas and all permits and that. If he's not, mm, would if he came in, you know, obviously we back him. We must, someone must think so much about him going in for the third time. Uh, and for me, if I were a manager, if someone kept coming back from me all the time, thinking, Christ, won't me be desperate? Nice to be wanted, isn't it? Uh, but is he is he is he safe? Is he comfortable in in that position? Plus, I think German FA want some kind of cash to let him go, but needs most. It'd be interesting that one. And I, for me, I don't know about yourselves. I don't know if you want to put in comments or like that. When do you want him in for? Because I'd I'd like from to have been in at the beginning of this week international break, so he's got a couple of week but like I say if you give players time off or give time off because <laughs> uh, centers out the played fantastic two wins this season I know look went on a bit about that and it's right in any walk of life if you're not doing great in your job in your own workplace I don't think my gaff is going to turn around and say oh you're going to take a week off like and uh, come back and we, we, we're back to it it's going to be Hey, this is what we need to be doing. We need to be doing this. We need to be doing that and improve. Oh, have a good few players off. You could look at it the other way. Have a good players a bit of time off um, for training when this new manager comes in um, and he wants to sit ground running with these players and say, right, this is where we're going to go. Don't know. It'd be interesting to see who actually gave the time off because we've got no manager as such. So we did that decision come from interesting stuff um alexander blessing 
14 to 1. He will link with Sheffield United job, if I believe, earlier on. And the reason why he didn't come, when I've been looking into it, is that, again, it weren't visa permit issues. So what's changed from then to now? So whether we've got ball rolling or all of certain things, I don't know. Um, but as in the blessing, when I take him, it's not about me, is it? I know what my choice would be. But again, odds have come down. We're going on then to Paul Warner at Rotherham United. Um, I think he's done absolutely fantastic what he's had to work with at Rotherham. And I'm not just talking about the transfer budgets and stuff like that, but all that to go through with the small squad where he had uh, with COVID. And they had to, literally had to put a, a team out, uh, young kids, otherwise they get dot points and... Stuff like that. Yeah. You can't be... If you're a big side and you've got a big, you know... Uh, what can I say? A big side with a bigger squad. It's not going to hurt you. But when you're under certain restrictions in championship, you're going to be doing like that. Then um, you're going to be after... Hit the ground running with the team that you've got and open, but you're not going to go through COVID. I mean, it, 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 certain clubs in certain ways and certain teams could get postponed. But unfortunately for Rotherham at the time, it was crippling them. And when we played them, I, I don't think we make a substitute bench up. But we had to play it and they put up a good show against us when we went to their place. Um, considering that what players we had to pick and choose from. So, Paul Warner, uh, they're doing pretty well in League One at the minute. Would he come? Hmm. Would he be... Would he want to come to us in our situation and having to start and take it up? Could he see this, no disrespect to Rotherham, could he see this as a move up in Championship or could he come up with Rotherham in Championship from League One? Would I have him? Yeah, I'd have him. Uh, like I said, it's not my number one choice, but he's been up and being contenders, and he's a bit shorter as the next person is Alex Neal. Again, Alex Neal. If, you, if any any guys what have been late watching about Alex Neal, yeah, I'd have him. He did well, fantastic at Preston North End. He came on um, from Norwich, Scottish. He'd, he'd come in similar. Uh, to what he did at Preston, and you know, I think they were, I think we were about six when he got relieved of his duties. So, and people say, yeah, but he's been at medium, this over, yeah, but he's still been doing football uh, punditry. So he'll know the league, he'll know the players, he knows what's happening. It's not as if he's been out of game and alienated from it. So he knows what it's all about. Um, then there's a few more, and then we'll get back to comments. And anybody what wants to drop their own. Comments in, appreciate it, guys, about managers that you like to see coming in. I'll get back to them when I answer them as well. Lois Barmorte, Mick McCarthy, uh, both at 20 to 1. Lois Barmorte, uh, assistant manager at R Fulham. Would he want to leave and actually take a role on himself? Again, rumours, Mick McCarthy, a bit like Neil Warnock. I, won't, I can't see Big Mick coming in personally because he'd have that much of a clash of personalities, a bit bored. And that's where really it all stems from board. The board's, the board's decision is going to be going for either a, a young foreign manager or a young manager. But if they appoint someone like Mick McCarthy, you know as well as I do, opinionated, like Neil Warnock, they're going to say it how it is, and that's not going to tick all boxes for the board. For the fans, it would, because we know what we what it needs. But as a board, it wouldn't tick all the boxes. So I can't see that happening. And outside at 22 to 1, Robbie Fowler. Who I believe has been in Australia. Uh, some leagues down there. Is he wanted to dip his toe, get in water, get back into management? We have to do a bit of research on that one. But Robbie Fowler, I don't think it'd be on many people's list. No, nope, against Robbie Fowler. But it's Arvis. Border going for the recruitment side, and it we all seem to be going into the 
Austrian, Germany kind of area at the minute. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it'd be interesting to see what uh, your guys think. And girls, Liz, sorry. Uh, just hope the board think of, uh, this is for Sean, just hope the board think of a club and not themselves for once and get manager who knows the league. You'd like to think so, Sean. Uh, would that happen? Realistically, I, I, back of my head, I'd like to think it is. But previous going back again without repeating myself too much, I think they're just seeing this as just um, a cash cash machine, a bit like because we've got X amount of clubs scattered about all over uh, Europe, if you know what I mean. And their seat is like uh, put a release clause in a, in a manager, Valer and Ishmael. Someone comes in, two million, pays it, see you later, ka -ching. But that money. They've had to pay off Marcus Shop because he was under a three year contract. So if he were under a three year contract, they've paid him up. We're then looking at another player, uh, sorry, another manager, what could be attached, i.e., Jans Wolf. So you're going to have to be paying out again for another manager's services. So the money what we <laughs> what we've made or what the board made from the Ishmael has been since paid out. The remainder of the contract from shop, but then we're going to have to go for another manager. So, once it's been better just to be keep Ishmael as much as we can, I don't know. I don't know. It just it just seems a weird, a weird way of business. If you if, if that's all we're doing, putting a release clause in, or we're you know, uh, accepting it and ka ching, see you later, out, oh, we'll get another one. Weird. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, Scarlex Red. Oh, but I've spelled that right. Sorry if I haven't. Oh, I said it right. <clears throat> Nearly sound like you're from Lumwood, are you? I originated from Grindthorpe and I am living in Mont Breton. So, a bit of the middle of Lumwood, uh, depending on which way you go. Um, Barnsley, through and through. Um, so, yeah, I originated from Grand Fork. Uh, could tell me my accent. Strong Barnes accent. Uh, but I'm currently living in Mont Breton. Denzel Donnell. Let Conway get his tracksuit on he knows best. <coughs> um, yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Had his uh, wanting to manage and run and have a lot of saint club. It's always interesting that when it's not going 100%, uh, the results and situation at club took a back seat, and then Mr. Lee, when we're making playoffs, is on Twitter, you know, congratulating what a fantastic season. I think sometimes we need a bit of backing and not like come out with statements from other members saying that we want to conquer Scotland because we've got a club in Scotland as well. Really, what about helping Barnsley? What about putting, you know, Bit of commitment to a bit of funding for Barnsley. I think that, uh, that's looking back at my throat for a bit, to be fair, saying that we want to conquer Scotland. What about conquering the Championship? What about conquering England? What about conquering Premier League? Hmm, that's my thought on that. Uh, <clears throat> our next manager will come from Europe, and that's all I can say about that. Or I can because it's cheaper, common, Conway. I think everybody's in the same agreement with their uh, McT Tomo 9292. Yeah, everybody's in the same agreement, mate. Um, I think we all know what direction where it's going to be going. Look, whatever manager comes in, I will back. I will back. And I think we, we've all need to get behind the manager when we come in. Get behind the manager, get through, get through to the players because it, it transcends onto the pitch. We all want this club to do well. Yeah. But. The issue is not just there, it goes above that, it goes to the top level. And this is where you need someone from top level to come down and say, for PR, PR exercise for West Ham fiasco. It's actually been shocking, it's been shit. We need someone from PR to actually explain the reasons behind this, so we know as fans what, what, what's happening. It just seems to be distance, distance in a way. We're a community club. We get on about this resident community and doing this for kids, and but when you look at it, is it is the business side? And when you look at it, it's 
but it's like us as fans and members of business, it's like distancing it away. People have had their money, bought their tickets to sit in that West Stand and they reluctantly had to either sit elsewhere or give a refund. But that, they've been looking forward to that for all our difficulties we've been through for COVID. We've all, we've, we've all had hardships. So don't take it out of the people that it's the club who it belongs to. And people will say, oh, yeah, but they're the owners. They're the owners with crimes of a council. And I know Luke touched on this, and I agree 100% with him. Uh, Luke Goddard yesterday on his stream. We should have a similar model to what they have in Germany. With so many fans on that board, so they can look after the board. Uh, they can look after the club with the board. And not just treat it as like a cash cow. Yes, a business, but you've also got to understand from where the fans is because it's our community, it's our club. Yeah, it's it's to be our club until the day you die, which will not be for a bit. But it's our club. So if some people fan if ever fans on the board, listen, engage with the fans. And these fans forums, it all seems to be select few what go. And people said to well, I'm not saying oh, but people said, why don't you ever get involved and why don't you get this and why don't you get that? And never get option to, never get an invite, never get, you know. And it's not for slating club, it's just understanding what goes off, understanding the reasons behind it and ask and ask a relevant question. What happened to the PR exercise? Why was it so badly managed? Why was it back so and it came through with just a general letter? I'd rather someone turn around and tell me the truth. It might not hurt. It, it might not stick well. But at least you know. And that's what it all, all boils down to. It's like a, engaging with fans, talk, communication. Communication is key in any walk of life. But to alienate, alienate yourself from the fans and run about this fan zone and, you know, we want to make it an atmosphere. And you're doing everything. You, you seem to be, I don't know if it's COVID restrictions or that, but you seem to do everything uh, differently. You don't seem to be engaging the fans, You're not listening to the fans. You listen to certain fans on these forums when they get invited. But questions I want to be asking, uh, I want answers to. Might not get an answer there and then, but I'd appreciate being able to have the opportunity to ask a question so I can come back and say, yeah, well, I understand now the reason why this has been done because this is the direction we're going in. But you're having to hear third and second and sometimes, yeah. Again, my bit of rant on that one. Trying to gain into a rant, actually. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so let's get back. There's a few messages coming up now. How next manager will come from New York? Yeah, I've got that one. But Bob wants yes, man. Who does what they want to say, Lewis? Yeah. We want to, yes, man. What, what we want to say. I'd like to think not. Um, I'd like to think that manager will come in, they can their base and they. Uh, players what play and the formation that we play. Uh, but the remit was when shot came in, wanted to uh, play this tempo and everything like that. But all of a sudden, I wanted this play nice one touch football like Man City. And that came from Khalid. Oh, you want to, want to try and change this and check. You can't just check, do that. You need the players, you need the training, you need the time to do that. Work with what you've got. No disrespect to the players, but we haven't got any kind of players. We haven't got Man City players. Work with what you've got. Ishmael came in, he assessed it, did what he had to do, took it on, did it. Bang. Decisive. You haven't got Dave Murphy from above saying, we need to do this and we need to do that. We need... Let the manager come in. He's the manager on that pitch. Because if results don't go his way and he's been listening from upstairs, we want to be playing this way or over. Sorry, Mr. Manager, you run out, get someone else in. Who's going to be a yes man? Like you just said, there, Lewis. I'd like to think not. I'd like to think a manager, i.e. someone like a Warner Car and Mick McCarthy is going to come in and say, I'm doing it this way. But we all know that. Strong opinionated person, what we need. Um, oh, I loser. Oh, you're not a loser. Sorry if I've uh, read that wrong. I loser. Oh, Lowouser. Uh, he did on the first, but when going down, all does the same everywhere he goes. Alex Neil, that is. It is, but again, it all, it all depends on the backing, doesn't it? What you get. 
Um, so if he's not going to get backed, then obviously it's not going to end end well. And it also happens uh, depends what happens behind the scene. You could say that to any manager, couldn't you? You could say that like to uh, Solskjaer at minute at uh, Manuel, or you could also say that about David Moyes when he went in for the first uh, temporary period at West Ham. Got shot, brought in Pellegrini. Didn't work out well. Got shot, brought in Moyes again. And now you're seeing the differences. He's wanting to have a say on the transfers. And look at him now. Have he in top four, five in Premier? David Moyes, experienced manager, what knows what to do. Yeah, so it all depends on that as well. I'm going to go get through these because I've uh, got a fair few coming through. Uh, I would like, uh, he did well at first job. Yeah. Uh, Silent Scepter. I would like Candice from the Dutch League side, RK Walchik. I don't know anything about him, if I'm being completely honest. If you want to uh, message or put a bit more info about him, I would gladly read into that. Gladly read into that, mate. Uh, Andrew 6830, we were so slow on getting wilder in that bounds away where we all seem to be dilly dallying. Were we actually in for wilder or were it just media and speculation trying to get fans up to but wilder were going to be on his way? But wilder taken out of it, I think we're still slow at gaining a manager in to be fair. Um, Andrew. Uh, Mick T, Tom 992 Hans Wolf will be the next manager we have tried before and now he is out of work. It makes it easy for Conway to get him. Exactly. Not to pay, third time lucky, in you come. Uh, let's have a look. He would come. Interested. Why would he come? I would like to turn. Why not? T Tyke, the model of the business is cheap managers and cheap players. So that relates to. Two inexperienced managers and players. Yeah. It's what we're on about, isn't it? It's a business model. Get them in cheap. Put a release clause in. I've had a good season and sell at a profit. I get that. It's a business. I understand that. But there's a way about doing it and not doing it like cheap after cheap after cheap. And you come out with a statement and saying that you want to conquer Scotland with your other club. So is, it, is that money... I'm making assumptions, so I've got to be careful what I've got to say here. So, I've got to be careful what I say here, but where is it actually getting invested in? I'm not saying hotels because I don't want to get it done for all, but it's got to get invested in the club that they're presently at. You'd like to think so. I'm not saying all, and it is because we've got to take the own wage out or the own shareholders, but you can uh, have a look at that one. Melanie Burley. Hiya, Melanie. I need to get back to you as well. Um, I don't care what country the manager's from. I want, I want to give them all a try my best. Once for day, going to Europe has worked with three out of five managers in the past. Yeah, Melanie. Um, so before I come on to that, Melanie, fantastic person. I never got that um, email. You know, what we discussed about logos and banners and stuff. Oh, you notice I got that, Melanie, bit of a backdrop. Uh, still working on it. I've got some other stuff, signed football over there. But I've got working on some other stuff to get on that side as well. So, yeah, Melanie, if you could get in contact with us, I'll uh, get him back straight away. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm, it's coming together now, but I'm wanting uh, to tap into your knowledge and or you don't mind about that, Melanie. If you if you uh, drop me a message, you don't like that private message or something like that on Facebook or like that, I'll get back to you. Okay, appreciate it. Look, I'll back next manager what comes in hundred and ten percent. We all, I think we all will. It might not be his choice, but we still need to back him and gain time. Um, and who knows? Like you said, three out of five managers have done, have, you know, have, have done okay in the past. But I think it's a gamble. Whichever manager you take, I think because it's an English game, English league, sorry, is that you'd like to think that the person already in this country will get adapt to it easier, not better, but easier. Someone coming in from the outside in might take a bit of time to come to the ways of thinking. I know football's a universal game. We invented it as a nation, but 
it's different playing styles, different playing methods. Not about tactics, but understanding the the fixtures, the amount, the amount of fixtures that we're playing, and all this kind of other. So that's the only reason. And because we don't really know, I mean, uh, the one uh, silent uh, scepter was on about Candice from Dutch League, RK Walsh, thing. Um, but I will look up on that if you can identify it. So I think it's the unknown that we don't know about in it. And that's the main thing. If we if we know that a manager, I mean, everybody can say Neil Warnock, but if you go to like someone that, like in Austria uh, or Germany and come out with someone like that, be like, "Well, oh, this guy here, not gonna." You, do you know what I mean? We don't really know that league, so when the name gets mentioned, we're looking at when like Hans Wolf. Oh yeah, he's been here. So you do a bit of research, yeah. But I will look at that one. So that's Melanie. So that's got. I would say Candice from that. But like a pawn, if Fita doesn't, this is frustrating to me. But it's not you look upon, but you what you're going to say yeah. If Fita doesn't get minutes against Fulham, he'll be recalled. They gave us him for a good time two months back. Sat on the bench, waste of sources, get some play and get on about and of it. I agree with you 100% there, mate. Why take someone on loan from that club and not even gain game time? I'm not being funny at all, but surely it can't be that bad. Why take him? Why take him on loan? Give him some game time. He doesn't even come on as a bloody sub. Not even come on as a sub. I first, me as a player, I'd be thinking, what am I doing here? I might as well be back over in bloody Germany here. Frustrating. Frustrating as hell. And I bet you that when he comes on pitch, he'll be a decent player. Just like Gomez. Took a bit of time to settle in, but I bet you're out to lick ground running. Yeah, it back frustrates. Look upon great point there, mate. Absolutely great point. Uh, Andrew Sharp. I, I, I would like these owners to go. I don't understand why they are here. They have no connection to the club or fans. Uh, limited, if any, investment and little profit. So I don't understand why they are here. Uh, Andrew, quick answer. Um, money. Portfolio. It looks good. Um Unless I get invited to any of these meetings and that, um, or if Luke Goddard does as well, then we'll, I don't think we'll ever really find out. But what is the intention? What is the the, the way of thinking of Barnsley? We always said that as soon as fans don't want us, then we'll go. Well, in my opinion, at this moment in time, you're not really endearing yourselves at the minute. You're alienating them, like I said previous. There's a divide. There's a divide happening. I don't like it. And I don't think because there's fans like it. We want to be connected to club. We want to feel part of a club. But it's not happening. If I want it's like slowly coming apart. I want it to be neat. I want it to be bonded together. Yeah. I don't like it. But Andrew, it's it's another club. It's another it's another investment on my portfolio we've come back money, mate. Like I said, I'm, I'm not just making that up. But when they want to conquer Scotland, I'm like, where, where we are in the league? What about us as a club? Is it like to one side? We had, we had their season last season. No, this is our us, our club. Don't come out with stuff like that. Don't like it. Mark, Mark, Alex Neil, uh, you might have answered this already, but. What's your thoughts on players not training all week? I think Luke Goddard mentioned it to a T yesterday. Uh, hour working. Um, I know you were, but um, Alex Neil, it'd be my number one choice. But I can't see it happening. Um, like I said, a bit earlier mentioned about it, reasons why. But <laughs> getting players off for a, is like a reward for poor performance. Surely you'd bump, surely be wanting to go out there and practice and learn and train and keep some fit and practice what we haven't been doing this season well as a player. I'd like to know who actually gave them time off. Who did it come from? Because we've got no manager as such. Did it come from Joel Oman? Did it come from above him? I'll tell you what, lads. Yeah, take a couple of days off. You're all right. Not going to get another manager, head coach for another few days yet. Wow. 
I like, like I said previous, if I were at work and I, you know, poor performance, I don't think my gaffer would be turning around and saying, take a couple of days off, you're all right. Don't worry about it all next week. Yeah, but performance figures are not exactly astounding. Yeah, that's right. Don't worry about it next week. Come in next week and we'll, we'll, we'll try and work on it, man. My gaffer won't be giving me time off or any anybody else out there. If you want performing or the business itself won't doing great, you want to all hands on deck, turn it round, practice it, learn it, get going, turn corner, and then said, you know what, lads? Right, we've earned a bit of wreck it. This is nice. But yeah, a, a weird choice, and I'd like to know medic, to be fair. Samstown, bounds of season, a cash cow. Patrick Crown to put in millions into save us from going under before we went bust and into the mission when we operated at the loss of two for you. I'm not saying that under Patrick Crown it wasn't a cash cow. Under Patrick Crown it was he ran it uh shrewdly. He identified problems with it, uh Samstown. And yeah, he did save it. Um our beer when it went with buckets outside. Uh our times fundraising, trying to get, you know, stop his club from going under. I didn't say it was Patrick Crown. Um he saved us. Um he saved us and then when Rizdale and back came in, that well, you know, it were, it were bad times, it were sad times. And it was yeah, it weren't good. Uh so practical crime, bounds of season a cash cow. So if, if if it isn't a cash cow now, then where's the money from the players getting sold for good money? Where's that getting invested? We're buying quantity rather than quality. We're invested in the side. And if you can tell me that it's been invested in parts of a team in the summer that wanted it, I'd like to know the players. Because DK went, Moet went, and Solbao went. And we brought in two Belgian lads, which were, tell them what, not match fit, but it were permit issues. We let Herbie Kane go on loan when I thought this season could have been a season for him with Moet going. So if it's not a cash cow, I don't know if you're on about it now or previous. I'm on about now. Under Patrick Crank were different. If he, if he saw a problem, he identified it and he brought in Adam Amel. He was shrewd. He was shrewd. He knew. We, he went to Adam Amel and, and let him come in. These guys won't. These guys now will go out and get a young player in because it's going to make profit on that. Patrick Crown wanted the club. And just remember that one made is one saved us. So I do know that Patrick Crown put money into the club. I never once said that Patrick Crown didn't run that. Okay. Uh, I've generally ever been to it. Well, next manager probably from uh, FC Kabul. Um, Bank and Reds. Yeah, I think he came to uh, Oakwell when he did that press conference when we were taking over the club. And when we were having a good uh, season last season and we were getting into playoffs. And he, I, I remember he got interviewed by Sky Sports News on to, in West End, which is now being condemned. Uh, so, yeah, Chin Lee has been. Uh, I don't know how many times he's been to actually watch a game. Uh, but, yeah, he, he has been when we've been doing well. Uh, Melanie Bailey, yeah, the backdrop looks. I'm being busy. I'll contact you tomorrow on email. Yeah, not a problem, Melanie. Um, like I said, the um, email is tykes tv1419 at gmail.com. Just send out any messages out in via emails or out like that, and I'll get back to you. Anybody, any, anybody, what's going to comment or any ideas where you want this to go, and then uh, do, doing like opposition fans. Interviews before and after games, stuff like that. Just drop us an email, messages, contact us, and I'll get back to you. I'm trying to reply back as many as I can. Sounds time to see your main job is to make up the two to million loss, maybe more uh, after COVID. Yeah, I get that. But then when Dan Murphy went, we didn't exactly rush into getting the CEO um, to make money. Uh, the CEO's main job was to make up the two to three million loss every year. Yeah, I get that. But when we're selling players, are we going to invest in players to also make that money as well and uh, self-sustain? 
uh, the club as well. So he's got to work both ways. Sam's on it. It's it's one of them where he's got to make the money, but then he's also got to balance books and how he's going to make the money. He's got to invest a bit to make a bit. Yeah, you, you're not just going to like a um, bit of both. You know what I mean? So you've got to invest a bit, make a bit, and you've that's, that's your profit. Mickey Tomo, uh, Martin Devaney would be involved in Barnes first team coach. So would be a good thing. Club, yeah, he's currently under 23s and he's, he's expressed his desire in local papers saying that uh, he'd like to be involved somewhere or other. But again, it all depends on who gets brought in um, to, you know, fetch, fetch us up to speed with background knowledge on the bench. Yeah. Ryan FC, as a Middlesbrough fan. Hiya, Ryan. All right, mate. A club like Barnsley should look at someone like Paul Warner from Rotherham, someone who has a decent track record. Yeah, agree. Agree 100%, mate. Uh, I said previous that Paul Warner has done well at Rotherham with limited budget where he's had and going through COVID at times when he didn't really have a team to put out himself. Um, so, yeah, I agree 100% with that, mate. Paul Warner would be a good shout. Um, I, I, you know, he's not my number one choice, but he's up there in Monastery and I think he's about fourth or fifth. In betting, so yeah, good shout that Dan Cooney. Great video, mate. And thanks to you and Luke and everyone at Tax TV. Spare channel, please keep it uh, ongoing between you and lads. I read all over. So I'm going to play it left. Uh, these ones do not care. Uh, cheers, uh, Danny, mate. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, wanted to keep the channel going when the Luke Roby obviously decided uh, for reasons that um, wanted to stand down for. You know his his own personal uh, reasons. Um, me and Luke Goddard had uh, discussions and kept it going, wanting to keep it going as well. Um, for such as yourselves out here for content banter, uh, reviews, info, news, and out to do with Barnsley related. Oh well, Barnsley Football Club, it's our club. Uh, but just want to keep everybody in look what's happening. Uh, Danny Cooney, the owners are users of the, uh, the club. As two for their own ends, they need to go ASAP. And that's why they're going around building the portfolio up. I think it happened in France. I think it was Nice, I believe. I think it was Nice, where they wanted, I think they got to, uh, in Europe, wanted to go one way, and fans didn't really take to it, and they ended up partying and coming out away from it, kind of thing, and then end up, you know, going, looking over the investments to add to the a portfolio. Andrew 6830, agree with Brian, the Middlesbrough fan. Since we've missed out on Wilder, Warner would be the next choice for me. See, um, Danny, you've got a, a, is it Danny? Ryan, sorry. You've got another one, what said Paul Warner. Yeah. Um, highly regarded. He's, he's, always, he's always done well. We always had to work with. And he's honest. Honest, honest man who knows the, the, the league, the game inside out. Next one, Danny Cooney. If he actually cared and had any smart business sense, they would invest a decent proven manager and players what they want and give a what we feel or think. Yeah. Uh, it's just what we've been go going on up, uh, in previous uh, comments, isn't it, but, uh, Danny? Is that how serious do you want to take balance of football club? Do you want to treat it as a stepping stone and think, right, I've had enough now, I'm going to move on and that's it, we're going to pull those resources and go out. Or are you really wanting to invest in it and really take this club a step further? I wasn't expecting from last season to be like back in playoffs again, but I expected to be mid-table uh, in, in a better position. Where I, Ishmael went, but I expected the recruitment to be better. I expected this to be more at it as a team, as a, as a club, of his own purpose. But from last season... It seems to be a million mile difference away from it. Whereas like his standards were up here last season. Now standards have just gone straight down. I don't know. Melanie Bailey. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. We brought in DK and Morris last January transfer, which helped lift us to the playoffs. Yeah, we did. We did bring him in. Uh, DK were on loan and Morris uh, permanent transfer. But then, then we're in and out of size, weren't we? Uh, DK, great player. Uh, what I believed it was um, that with Dave Murphy 
CEO doing his job. Um, I know he had knowledge of the MLS league as well, so that helped vastly. Uh, DK, and look out. But then there were things going about saying that we've got him on loan with a view to permanent a transfer, things be sorted out for summer. <clears throat> and things be sorted out for summer. And then when it comes to summer, it was well, wages issues, or obviously I've been agreed that when they come back to Orlando. But did yeah. So if you if you wanted an investment, you could have got him for say, I don't know, a rough ballpark figure, 22 year old international American striker. 10 million, 15 million, 22 year old. And he goes on then to score a load of goals, does well. Surely then his profit is a business point, man. My investment of 10 or 15 million pounds is going to be 25 million. I've made 10 million pound profit on that. And we all knew that Daniel DK had ended up doing well for Barnsley. And I ain't got no problem with that, doing well for Barnsley. But we've gone out and bought an international proven goal scorer. He'd done it in the championship. We've paid the fee. We've kept him for a, what two weeks, signed for a three-year contract. After two so two years, it's a good couple of seasons. A big boy comes in for him. Oh, yeah, we're gonna offer you 25 million bats as a release clause. You've made a you've made a profit. Not going out and getting like let DK go back. And then, then we've gone out and got two young Belgian lads who had uh, visa issues. Yet to prove it, Azaka just coming into it like now. But how many months have we into, into the season? A couple of months we took up, we, uh, he couldn't even play for us. And now he is, we started to see. But we've, what, four months into a season and look at the position we were in now. So yeah, he did bring in DK Morris. Morris, unfortunately, are injured, which is, you know, but you can't rely on fetching people in to help us lift us to playoffs. We need sustainability. So if come this January transfer window, whichever manager comes in, the manager's going to come in and say, right, we're going to go out and get a couple of these players and out on loan or whatever. That's to keep us in championship. Then they go back to the clubs. Then we've got to start again in summer. Rather than beginning of the season, this is where we're going to hit ground running. But we're getting halfway through and we're like, well, we need to be looking at January transfer window now to make a, a, a change. So, yeah, January, which helps to lift at playoffs. Helps to lift at playoffs, but look at this season. This is what I'm on about. Recruitment's key. Yeah, so the CEO's job in this summer, what, to help us what? Stabilising championship or lift us at playoffs. We've gone to playoffs. That ended. It should have been right. Invest now. See where we can go, but we didn't. We didn't. We didn't take it on from back. We, we, sh we should have been playoffs. We should have been right. Next step. Assess it. Right. We need to improve in this area. Key, key, key. CEO, we need these players. But we haven't. We haven't invested strongly enough. Um, Richard Barakov uh, said earlier... Mate, some fans, most fans just want these clowned out of the club or ambition, no brains, no nothing. Yeah, he did, mate. Yeah, he did. Look, it's like we can see what's happening at the club. We can see what's happening at the club. So why not do it? Why not act on it? It's like just go over and do this and just go that and just. You've got to be serious about it. They probably are. We probably are. We probably misguided. We've got a CEO who's come in, and it's come from Man City. Big culture shock. It's not Man City. This it is Barnsley. Barnsley, an identity. Don't alter his identity. Don't alter our identity. We need our identity back. Don't take it away from the fans. Don't alienate the fans. Barnes FC. For the community, for the town. Sean Kirk, an ex knowledge manager or Aston Villa manager to be good, to both good in championship. Dean Smith and Farkle. Yeah, yeah. But, well, we both know uh, championship. 
it all depends on would this board be willing to go to when managers who know that they're, they're strong I mean strong opinionated, strong willed would they fit the would they fit the structure, the tick box structure as in doing it our way and that's it which goes back to the previous comments uh, saying that the only one's a yes man I like to think not. I like to think a manager's got who comes in and he'll, he'll say, "Well, this is my direction. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to play." Get backed. Get backed. Keep going back again. Whichever manager comes in, they need the backing from above. If he's not going to gain backed, we're going to be in the same position again. Same position again. Manager's going to be coming in. He's wanting to do this. He's wanting to do his way. He's not going to get backed. It's not going to work. He needs backing. 100% knees back in. Uh, Melanie Burley, apparently we didn't get DK because their bout clause was $22 million, uh, which we'd never pay. Exactly. So, what was it? Yeah. So, I said roughly $15 million, So, I don't know, dollars conversion to that $22 million is not a million miles away. So, if that were VM, if, if, if that was the bout clause of that, a 22-year-old American international, or we know who, who did it in, he bullet, he wrestled them off. What's the ambition of the club? We do want to go then. Are they wanting to? Well, I think it answers it, doesn't it, uh, Melody? That why why bother taking someone on loan with a view for a permanent, and then all of a sudden it turns around and says, "Oh no, by the way, it's clauses this." Then when you listen back, and when it got all sorts of this loan agreement. Everything went, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. It's all been sorted. It's all been sorted. We know what's happening. When all of a sudden it comes to the end of the season, he's going back on playing to America. So, what it falls up yet again, there's fat fans. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Melanie, got that. Uh, Danny Cooney, it makes no difference. Uh, all managers, when the owners have no interest in success in the field, Bounds of Sea is a brilliant community club and these owners do not get it and should go. Um, I like to think James and uh, Gene Crine do. Um, I think they know what it what it means to the club because I know what issues and that going off bit the ground and wanting to develop it and all that kind of stuff. It bounds the council and getting messy and West Ham show and even when you've got Paul, when you've got Paul Conway coming out saying when Khalid tell him that he's shooting West Ham he. Even he's come out and said, well, what for? Didn't even know about it. Gene Crack didn't even know about it. So CEO's coming after a few months, shut West End down, it's condemned. Really? I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to think that they do. But, like I said, how many times have they had to come over and watch a game? You know what I mean? Such as your Chinley and... I know Gene and James are different. Uh, I know that they, it's close to the art, which is very understandable. Danny Coney, uh, you just summed it up when we are losing our identity. Bring back John Dennis Lowell with Eki. Do you know what? John Dennis, what, what a legacy that was. Eh? Going back a bit there. And Eki. What's say Identity. We're slow, you know, it's slowly losing it. And it, it, it pains me to say it, but it's it's saddening. It's saddening to watch. We don't want it, we don't want it splitting up. We don't we want it to be close together. Jesus Christ, we want everybody to be even if we lose, but we've get it all. We can come out and say, Do you know what we've been unlucky, baby, we've get it some and we've But we're not at the minute. We're just coming out and accepting it. Not us as fans, but it's what's happening. Make a decision, make it decisive, make it positive. Get a feel good factor back. Could you imagine last season if we'd have been in grand and we're in, play uh, in playoffs? It would have been absolutely bouncing. I think West Ham would probably end up crumbling down, we'd have been making that much noise. You know what I mean, though? It's. They don't realise, they don't understand. Frustrating thing about it, they don't understand. I'm doing a bit of rant here. Anyway, guys. Um, now 15. I'm probably going to give out another 15-20 minutes. I don't know. It depends how much you all want it to go. 
uh, if you want to uh, have some more uh, comments, keep them flowing through, I'll get through them. Um, we'll just have a, a general discussion then about out, oh, really, if you want any football, um, talk about other teams, if there's any clubs that are on here, I'll keep it going, keep it active. Uh, Dan Coney, this one's up, John Dennis, oh, Bank and Reds, hi, Bank and Reds, uh, just on the warning situation, anybody remember, he kept robbing him up a lot of money to lose if he go down, and a lot of fans will walk this time. This is what I'm on about, but I think you can look at any manager as well, um, is that no manager is 100% bulletproof. You get that. No, no one is. They make good choices, bad choices, good signings, but, you know, fantastic signings. I think we're all guilty of that. And sometimes... I think we have been an ex Barnsley player many months ago. People seem to turn to him because they can see what he's done and what he's capable of doing. And then when you like, look at it in depth, you could also say, yeah, well, he's been bad at that, he's been bad at this. I think any manager what's hard to work at minute, he could say that about anybody. Any manager and say, well, yeah, that's why he got booted for because he had a bad season or he's done that. So, you know what I mean? It might be that... If you get stagnated in that job, it just didn't fit. Uh, I take your point on we have fa- fa- uh, a lot of fans uh, will walk this time. I, I, yeah, it, it, this is why it's so critical. But in the same respect, do you think if they appointed a, a manager from abroad, or in this country, it doesn't matter either or, to be fair, I'm just using an example. But if, you, if it, the next manager they bring in and they fail, do you think that fans would walk as well? Or is it just because it's for Warnock factor in this? So, say, it's ever brought in, uh, so I think, so I think, so I think, so I brought in an Alex Neal or Paul Warner and it didn't take ground running and we were poor. We ended up going. Do you think as many fans would walk if it was Warnock or not? That might be a factor in that as well. Or if Wilder had come in and if Wilder didn't get backed and he didn't have a great season. Do you think he'd have gone? Because remember that he took Sheffield, Sheffield United up to Premier, so I could do and he obviously they went down and it was like, yeah, I'm going kind of thing. So he could say, yeah, he's took on beer, but that's it, he's going back down. So I think every manager and every uh, every club, every team, what we've done, you could say that Daniel Farkle, you could say the same him at Norwich, but I'd have him as well because he knows the league, he knows what it takes to get out of here. So he, he could come in and make it as, as a solid championship side. Yeah, I think we all come to expect that we want to be a solid championship side. If we get a good run in league and we get to playoffs, yeah, that, if that's a bonus. But I think if we keep on expecting to be in playoffs or expecting to be uh, winning league, that's another step up. Where more investment is, and remember, these uh, teams are coming down. We've got parachute payments. Championships are, but you look at League One, that's getting harder year by year. But teams in there won't, won't be coming out. And you look at your Sunderland, your Ipswich, your Sheffield uh, Wednesday. Yeah, they're, they're all, it's getting harder and harder to get out of here. So, whichever league you're in, you've got to be stable, you've got to be solid. And at this moment in time, we seem to have one good season, one bad, one mediocre, one bad. Then, we, then it's like, oh, we're facing relegation, we're just above it, we're facing relegation, we're just above it. It'd be nice to say, right, we're mid-table, oh, we're a solid top 10. And then hoping that we have like a run like last season, go. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you look at like, say, Eddie Howe. What happened at Bournemouth? He did miracles at Bournemouth. He's gone to Newcastle. Massive, massive job. Massive pressure on that. Yeah, so thinking at names that could have been banded about, what could have been at Newcastle. What's that relate to in, in relation to us? You know what I mean? That's massive pressure on there. Good luck to lad, because he's a, a young young manager, young coach. Hope it works out for him. But yeah, um, critical, critical appointment, mate. Good point. Good point. Danny Cooney, born as a soft spot for Barnsley and it would be ideal until the season, at least keep us up with Conway. We'd rather see us go down. Warner, yeah, he has got a soft spot. He has got a soft spot for us. Um, 
as you may know, qualms and mistake, uh, you know, kept it kept it quiet or like that. But like I say, it'd be a clash of personalities, and I don't, to be fair, I don't think Borders even after an, in, an invite for a, an interview. I don't think they would, because um, it, it, it don't fit in their their box, their culture, what they're looking for in a manager. Uh, the manager himself would love it, but the board themselves would be against it. That's my belief in that, anyway. Uh, come and bring back John Henry, John Henry, club ambassador. I know John, great man, and do all the fans love him at his club? Yeah, John Henry, uh, club ambassador. This is what we need, isn't it? Some some kind of connection in in the club. You know, we've got Martin Devane and Bobby Assel, but we need him back ambassador role. We need him Barnsley itself to be close knit again. You know, I mean. You look how many empty seats for this in in in, uh, in ground and that. I'm sure they could do my way, my way of thinking. I'm sure they could do schools. Go around each borough. Go around each borough. And every week, I don't know, enter competition or whatever it is, 40, 40 kids, bring a parent. Here you go, a ticket. Because I'm seats doing no, yeah. I'm seats doing no, so it's good. How, how good PR is this? You could go to a, a school and so and get in contact with school governor or whatever it is, headmaster, mistress, whatever you want to call them, right? Go to a school, right? Your school has been picked out at random, and it'd be a total random thing. Or schools could write in and ask. Club at send could say right, turn and say right. It's fifty. Uh, allocated tickets there, right? Then 50 will go to one individual pupil. That one pupil is allowed to bring a parent, one parent, mum or dad, yeah? If then, if then, that person, that young kid wants to bring his mum or dad, so say that one, that one kid wants to bring his dad and then wants to bring sister or like that, do that kid for a quid. Got three people going in there, yeah. Three seats to cut, which would be there'd be some seats here, right? Try and dedicate a, a family area side in it. And three people will be coming in on match day, spending money on refreshments, club shop, and then that kid might it's not guaranteed, but what's it cost? You med, I think, because it's we've spent some money for drinks and pop and crisps and whatever. Probably go into club shop and want an hat or a scarf. Yeah. Or give him a free scarf. Red just a, a red and white one. Yeah. That kid's gonna be going from that game. Oh, can I go again? And this time, yeah, you can. But make that kid a kid for a quid. Because that's all gonna have to win now. Engage the fans and then move on to another school. Keep it going. It's good PR, isn't it? For community. Kids for a quid. Like it don't it, it's very rare it happens, or it might happen when we're playing a, a, a nobody in like Papa John's or something like that where atmosphere's open it up then. Kids for a quid. Adults for a fiver. But we need to get engaged, we need to get the younger generation through. That's what I don't see happening at the minute. That's what I don't see happening at the minute. Bring back John Henry, club ambassador. Your club ambassador could be going around to schools, engaging, doing talks, doing, send some under 23s out to schools for a PE lesson. Oh, I've, I've, had, signed, oh, I've had my shirt signed by a player. Oh, buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Can I go? Can I go watching? Can I go? Get someone out of here to schools. I know we're in community, but and we do a fantastic job, players, uh, hospital and stuff like that, Christmas and that, and respect to them, respect to everyone and what do that. But let's engage in schools, let's get them bums on seats, all the empty seats, what we're not doing out. Just think of merchant uh, revenue, what we could bring through here on merchandise and that through, through incentives like that. So, why is CEO looking at stuff like this? This is these are the kind of questions I'm going to be asking, club. 
for getting invited to these meetings and stuff like that. If you're wanting to make money and advertise and stuff like that, how good is PR as that? Imagine feedback you get from social media and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's engaging stuff. Danny Coney, bound to Rafa City Nil, Clint Marcel. We have a property and IT club then, won't we? Eh? Oh dear, happy days. Can we, t- can we go back to them days? Oh my God. But it, it won't just, it, <laughs> it won't just at the club. All that went back into the town, the town centre. Taxi drivers, we, oh God, what an oh, unbelievable, unbelievable memories then, mate. Yeah, blast, blast that one. Does anyone remember the legend Jerry Taggett? Oh, Jerry, 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 yeah. Getting sent off at Lowton. I think we lost 5 0, but it was a long way on, but we had passion. Jerry Taggett, you were a no nonsense uh, Irish, Irish lad, which cost, I believe, what, either 60 or 80,000 pounds from Man City uh, reserves. Yeah, that's going back a bit. Under, were it under the same man, oh, manager? Was it Mel Machen at the time? Mel Machen. Andy Rammel. Andy Savile. And uh, certainly Glover as well. But I remember Danny Fire. A few names from Blast from Pass for you. But yeah, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Identity. And passion. Jerry Taggart. <sighs> Christ, thought he'd run through a brick wall for you, that lad. He was built like one and all, to be fair. Right? But we won't mess about with him. I know if we're in a fate, he'll have him back at me. <laughs> Mel Machin, yeah? No, nope, because he was from Man City. You know, so that's where you tap into market, isn't it? The manager what knows someone. Well, what, he went on to be an Irish international, Jerry Taggett. Great player. Great player. You know, such as like Lee Butler. Randall and Savile were class. I remember when we were in administration and Andy Rammel came back with Wickham Wonders and he got a reservation, Andy Rammel. He come from Man U. Because uh, Sir Alec Ferguson always had a soft spot for us with uh, Tommy after Munich disaster. He always respected us in that respect with the uh, history at club. He always had a soft spot for us, Sir Alex. Um, and it's nice to see that in game that he came to us. Um, he could have gone elsewhere because he was. Apparently, he were, were knocking him in for reserves. I think it was Ponton's league back at the time. And he came to us, and then obviously, we saw at his time and then moved on to Bashes New. But when he came back, it was around about the time of administration, Wickham Wonders, so he'd been knocking on a bit. He came back and he got a rate ovation. A good lad, good servant, good good pro. Really good. Come on, everyone, let's get our club back. Exactly, our club. Our club. It's pride, isn't it? It's pride. It's. I'm always, I'm always proud of them. I'm always proud of them. It's just people above need to be made aware in it, how passionate we are. And it's certain as so this is what I'm on about. I'm just hoping that we do get a, a manager. Oh, we're not Deacon. We need to. <laughs> oh, we're not Deacon. Oh, my God. Great with having a reminisce here, Danny. Oh, we're not Deacon. Another, yeah, another great player. Look, I've got, I don't like them. Players like that, the characters, their personalities. They did, they, you know, it, it was such a different era. I mean, times change, obviously, the times change. But they came in, they, get, they, they had passion. They had passion. Mark Mark, uh, Taggart's girlfriend lived in the same street as, oh, as me, I remember. He sponsored the car, bright red. His face and writing his. Island's number on Jerry Jeggy must have hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm on about. This is what this is what it's about, community. Having a laugh. People remembering things like this and comments. It's it, you know what I mean? You you look back on them, it's like, oh God, can I go back to them times now? Happy days. But with his identity, we knew we who we were as a club. We 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 are at this moment in time as a club is that we get players in young and cheap, develop them and move them on. It's a business, I get that. But wouldn't it be nice to get get players in young, plus paying a bit for them, develop them, but not being an ace to let them go. Let's get the worthwhile value 
not let them go for peanuts. Yeah, that's where it comes into it. Not like build them up. Um, I'm going to use like a player, for example, but I'm hoping I'm wrong. Get a player in, build them up. Last season, Cancelers could have gone for like say five or eight million quid this season. Oh, we're struggling a bit. We might take about two or three million for him. Bang, gone. A quick fire sale. We should be like that. I'm hoping that we're not like that with this CEO. If he's uh, saying that that we didn't make that, that amount of money last season because it won't, it, it won't good, it won't a good season. It might not have been a good season financial wise, but also it affected a lot of other clubs who weren't alone in this. It won't um, affect that side of things, but we did okay as a club because we weren't in playoffs. So cast your mind back when we were in playoffs last time. So, I've, yeah, I think we did all right, to be fair. But as a CEO, as a business, you're probably thinking, oh, no, we didn't do great because we didn't make X amount of millions. Mm, so did, you know, 91 other clubs, probably. Even Arsenal, your biggest club, were getting shut of staff. Yeah, we've got higher expenses and I'll get back to all they get back. But when you put things into context, every club's different. Yeah, we haven't got their way structure, so we're living we're in his means. So yeah, you're still losing money, but you you can address that. Uh Dan Coney, he was built like a tank, wasn't he? And he was all he said things the owners won't get his history of identity and they didn't they tap into it. Well you'd like to think anybody what's coming into a club or, or in any business to be fair, it'd be doing some kind of homework or research on the community and that. I know uh, going for when he came in as CEO, he come from France. He had a similar background because he went about the mining community and all that kind of thing. So we understood that. Dan Murphy came in and what I saw and what I heard of Dan Murphy, uh, very well spoken, very knowledgeable, very open, very honest uh, to what he said in, in certain respects, uh, what he was wanting to do, what he was going to do. And then... Went to Notts Forest, but then when you look at the new CEO, what's come in, he seems to want to come in and do a change round. And it's like, whoa, phew. let's text talk, see what I've got to do. One of his first things was close West End. Oh, <laughs> slow things down a bit. It sounds a bit bad when um, got to do that and not, uh, CEOs don't even know. Joe Higgins, hi. Hi, Joe. Sam's town. Fortunately, we've always sold our best players. Prize would draw more. It weren't sold for a few million each. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Sam's. Yeah, I agree with you that, mate. Uh, I was surprised. Unfortunately, we've sold our best players. Prize would draw more. It weren't sold. I was surprised. I uh, don't know about you, Sam's, but um, before he went on a free, uh, so his contract out, I was surprised that the the uh, the club or the player, the agent, didn't go in January for a, a million or two and the, 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 the club could have cashed in on that I was surprised on that Carl Woodrow, yeah another one I'm surprised because I've been linked with Cardiff a few times, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong with that Sam's, um, I think he's been linked with Cardiff a few times um, where he signed a contract obviously it's captain uh, so will that, uh, will that I think we have even I'm, I'm only guessing you know what I mean Sam but they've obviously offered uh, Corley a bit extra in, in wages structure for him to stop here. Uh, but do you think, you probably answered a bit in it, obviously more it's gone, but Sam, what do you think when we would draw out is now, would you think he would be, I'm not going to say go, it's the wrong word, but would you say be more likely to go this January transfer window? Um, or do you think because he's the captain, it you want to stay for a bit longer. It'd be interesting to hear your comments on that. But good point about actually, mate. Uh so my best player, surprise would drop. Yeah. I'm surprised we aren't going for a few million. Rather than try not exploit it, but get best value for what we've got as as our player. Rather than letting go on cheap or aggle and because we've seen it in the past, not maybe Orian, uh Pinnock, uh James Bree, you know what I mean? And he's like went at the same time as uh Connor Oran. Look at Mark Roberts, uh, Alfie Mawson. So I think we could have a bit more 
Uh, I think the, the, the one transfer what stuck, sticks out better for me was John Stones. Uh, when back then, before this regime, I think it was under the Crimes. Uh, so going back to the previous one, Crimes identified that and he knew he saw the potential in it. So when he went, he put a sell on clause in it. So when he went on for X amount of millions, he brought money into the club again. He, he, so and that's why I'm going back to the Patrick Crime thing for is that Patrick Crime was very football savvy. He knew we were a good prospect. Uh, Mason Allgate. Another one with a, a clause in, I don't know how much it is, but I know he put a clause in. But when he goes on to X amount, he, he's bringing money back in. And under this board at, min, at minute, I don't think we've got out like that in. Like a selling clause, or I don't like that. He's going to play international. Or I don't think we've, it's just like take the money and that's it. We've got it. But yeah, I'd be interested to see if, hear what you say about that, Sam. We would draw. Do you think he'd possibly. I mean, speculating, but do you think he could possibly go in the January transfer window? I'd like to be on that. Right. Danny, uh, I would be happy to have Sir Bobby Assel as our manager with Disco because at least we would know. <sighs> I do and I don't. Um, I love uh, Sir Bobby and uh, Disco, but do you think it'd be a position that we're in now? I think it'd be too much of a step up. I personally think that I like to see him involved somewhere over in uh, set up. You know what I mean? Like a step, a step up from the academy and under twenty threes and that. I like to see him more involved in that. But I think if they took it on, I think it'd be, just be a bit too much. You know, and I won't. I won't want fans to get the hopes up, and then when it's not great. Like not turn, but it, it won't go well, would it? I'd like to see that happening. Um, I think in future there could be. I think in future there possibly could be. But then I'd, I'd also like to get an Andy, uh, Adam Amel. I'd like him set up in, in youth with kids, with tricks. Because he came back to club, he loves club. And when, when he went, it was well, it heartbreaking because he was gutted. He was gutted. I mean, you've got to go back at Wembley and back with goals he scored. So I, 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 I don't know the situation at club, but for me, I'd want people who's been at the club and knows what the club's about and say, look, Adam, are you doing any coaching badges or all like that? Yeah, well, come back to Barnsley, get into it, you've set up. Well, yeah, PR exercise again. It was, it's Barnsley. All things I'm saying... You might agree, you might disagree. But all things I'm saying is I'm thinking about the interest of a club. Not short term, long term. I want him, it's going to be around for generations to come. I want him to go and keep better and better and better. So like I said, I might, you might agree, disagree. It's uh, one of them, but that's my opinion. Just going back to your comments. Um... Uh, Danny Cooney, Woodrow would, uh, should never be made captain. That was the second biggest state after shot. I'm old school, me, and I, I'd always have... Can I word this now? I don't want to be disrespectful to any players or like that, Barnsley or otherwise, but I'd always like a captain to be either a defender or a midfielder because... I'm, you, you, you probably agree or disagree on this because you'll, you can come back and me say, yeah, Harry Kane's captain or Hugo Lloris is captain and Peter Schultz is captain and this and that. But I think if you've got a captain in in goal, goalkeepers are captain, they can be too far back from the, the play and they've got to make their voice travel from the goal that they're in to other end of pitch or whatever. If you're an attacker or a striker, forward player, you're up front, and are you seeing what's going on behind you? A pattern of play and over. You should be looking forward to making your runs for goal. So is that one of the reasons why Cole is working too far be, uh, back to get the ball and take it forward for advanced play? So I'm thinking, if you, in my opinion, if you're in, mid, uh, if you're in midfield or defence, you've got the overall picture. 
Yeah, you can see what's going off side to side, back and front, dictate. Really, there should be 11 captains on pitch, but we all know that we've got to have a captain like that, Mowit. I mean, you'll look at one Mowit and Saul Bauer. Spine. Saul Bauer in back. Mowit's here. He's dictating it. He's, he, yeah. And that's why I think some at times that Wood Draws taking free kicks and corners, and that's another issue. If I'm managing training, I'd be, I'd be turning around and saying, Right, you do this, you do you the manager, yeah, but he's captain, yeah, but you're the manager. You work on this. You can't really keep relying on them all the time. Captain, captain, captain. Right, uh I'm 40. So I'm gonna be wrapping this up in a minute, guys, unless you keep your comments going through. Um Bounds of match day drinkers, Mark Mark, your mean the girl, Shelly Close, Peniston. <laughs> all right, so going back to the Jerry Taggy. <laughs> Uh, agree, Adam Allen loves our club. Yeah, I'd have been back like a, an art, I'd be, yeah. Get a bit young and get, get him training, get him. And I go to, like I said, I go to PR exercises that. Yeah, club, club, club. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Uh, Mark, Mark, I think Woodrow is in the shop window. Many captain, I earn a one team off the books. Played every minute in the championship this season when his problems have been put. Yeah, he doesn't even uh, get subbed off for all like that, mate. Um, uh, what can I say about that? I'm thinking, is it shot window? I think every player is in shot window, to be fair. Uh, and if they're not, then they should be, they should be playing out of his skin. Because uh, you're going to be getting scouts with that much media attention like now with TV, uh, with TV and stuff like that, what's going off. So I think every, every player is in shot window. I finally want to take it and needs to up his game then because I say not just you but the fans and well have said is he's not being exactly great. He struggled a lot, but for some reason he don't either get dropped for not dropped or rested. Rested or get subbed off. And for me, any player who's not having a great game should be allowed to get should be allowed to get subbed captain or not if you're having a poor game you're going to have to come off and that's down to again manager how strong is the manager says it all and let's have a look back Matt Matt no match day this was one was around 1990 Danny Cooney Letting Saul Bauer go because he was deemed over age sums up when he was quite quality. It won't just over uh, that as well. I do believe he was getting uh, homesick with his family. Um, so I think on that defence, it won't just be over age, but I think he also wants to go back with his family. Uh, so it won't just, as much as I'm like, on about board with over age players and that, it just wasn't on about that. It was also on about the he was getting home sick and he wants to go back to his family and he was more happy, which I, I respect that. I mean, when he was here, he was fantastic, he was a great player. He, he could tell the difference when he was in defence and that. Um, and club, I think, honoured that and, uh, you know, acknowledged it when he wanted to go back. And I think the vast majority of people understood the reasons why on that one. But it was a shame. It was a shame because he, he had a good footballing brain and I think he was good right youngsters. So it's your civic, you know, in in in, in uh, defence. As much as big uh, Val had to ever say in that my management, I think uh, Saul Bauer also did a lot with, him. and not just on the pitch, but also on the training side of it as well. Then come in, attack TV. Need uh, to take over Barnes FC. Let's all come together. Yeah, how much do you think it's a cost, mate? <laughs> I have to have to see if there's any role offers coming up. <laughs> Right, guys. Um, I'm going to be great stuff. Keep it going. Thanks, Danny. I appreciate it. Appreciate everybody what's been on uh, comments, likes, subscribes. Uh, keep it, keep it going. Keep this uh, channel uh, real. Um, so everything what you do, it, it helps me, helps the channel, helps the content. Uh, engaging such as yourselves, you are taking time out, which I've fully appreciate that um you're taking your time out you you know you you you're communicating you're getting involved in stuff 
appreciate that. Uh, we try and, like I said, it's, for, it's by fans, for the fans, and I don't want to be all negative, but we've got to see how it is and uh, discuss and have, have a banter, have a debate, uh, discuss things and like that. Let's keep it all going. As Sam's town, Woodrow still only 26, but he needs to regain his form and play as a 10 rather than number 9. And having to uh, drop deep, Woodrow's being loyal to BC, but I think he will leave the next he's offer. Good, yeah, good points for you, mate. Yeah, Sam's town, um, 26, so he's not old. He's, he's still, what, 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 of course, says company coming into his prime, I suppose. Um, I agree with you, yeah. He needs to, his form needs to improve. Um, as a 10 rather than dropping nine, nine and deep, yeah. Totally agree with that. And I think a lot in his confidence, I think a lot in his system that it's been played and where they're with, with, uh, with playing uh, would draw, to be fair. He, he has been loyal. He, he's, he's been, I know he's been uh, linked in the past with uh, various clubs, Um uh, Cardiff, I think Fulham a couple of years ago. Uh, sorry, uh, come from Fulham. Uh, Cardiff, have been linked with a few other clubs and that. Could he have gone? Mm, yeah, possibly could have gone. We had to stay loyal. That uh, says a lot about character at Bloke. And I, I've got no qualms. It, look, he's not going out to play bad. He's not purpose doing it. He's just struggling for form. And when you're at club and the, we're not addressing these issues, it's, it's hard to see and... I'll tell you, I determined that the bloke is is the. I forgot which game it was. But we were pretty recent to go. We lost, and it was ugly and it wasn't nice to see. But some of the fans actually turned on the players, and he had to get dragged away, Corley, by some of his team players because we were actually having a pot back at him. That is not a that is not a player that don't give a shit about club. That's a player who does give a shit about club because he's not purposely going out. And I think the frustrations all came out then afterwards where certain players were criticising the training methods. We weren't allowed to do things. They're not doing mission training. So I think it's a lot in it well deep rooted in that. But the players at the time took it to heart and Cole certainly did. And I felt sorry for Cole because I, I think we all can agree he's not having the greatest of seasons. Is his vast majority of team. He's been struggling. And I've got, I've got a lot of time for players who actually want to do well. But when we're not getting help, or we're playing a system that we're uncomfortable with, it's, it's, a bad, it's a bad atmosphere. It's a bad situation. One what I hope and will turn around with his next appointment, whether that'll be and identify... And Mick Corley is focal point up front. Just like what you said, Sam's town. I think he will leave if the next East offer comes in. Um, I think he will. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong. But I think he will. Because I think a, a fresh pair of eyes, fresh manager, what comes in, can, could get the best starter. Corley will draw and address it if he's allowed to. I'm hoping wrong. But yeah, good points for you, Sam. Cheers for the stream, Neil. Matt, Matt, no, not a problem, mate. Anytime. Um, no, I looked at one yesterday, but I were working. Um, I, pardon me, I were up, hoping to get one done every Friday evening. I don't know how you feel about that on a regular thing on a Friday. For an hour, an hour and a half. Probably start at seven ish, something like that. Uh, just to have a general talk, uh, discussions out, out in general, really. Any football banter. Uh, upcoming fixtures, who we want to win, who we, you know, have a, have a general other opinion. Of what it's about our club, Barnsley, we could also have a look at the championship, uh, have a bit of a predictor thing going off and seeing what, what's going to be happening, who we think we will, what we're going to do, just to keep it uh, going. Uh, Lippy Fraser also being told to find a new club, very for Jenny due to his age and being out of contract at the end of the season. Yeah, it's a bit hot and cold, Dominic Freezer. Um, I did. I know when he went in stands uh, against Derby County, he came down from West Stand um, in front of me in Pontiend. There were a lot of kids who were taking for selfies, signing autographs, and even though he wasn't playing, still come and took time out. So that was dedication for you. He didn't have to do that, but he did. 
but how good a PR is that? And it's a shame that nobody picked up on that on other media or social media and stuff like that. What a player, when he's not playing, actually comes out from his box, comes down to the fans, signs stuff, selfies, and the second half had already started and he was still making his way back. Not a lot of that gets publicised, but I do. I see things like that. That's what's good about the club. That's what wants to get brought to people's attention. But players do engage with the fans. I just think it could be handled a lot more better and it could be PR'd a lot better. You know what I mean? To get everybody involved in this. My opinion. That's my opinion. So, have have got any more comments coming through? Because I'm nearly finished. So, right, we're going to be wrapping it up in a minute. Jonathan Guest. Um, whoever comes in with an idea and use of players, he's got to play with them. Uh, better just stick with yours and draw. Don't have to change every week. Yeah, good, good point, Jonathan. Again, um, I know that Mark said a few injuries and stuff like that, but even some I mean, Anderson and Styles got rested or dropped or whatever you want to do against all. And obviously we're tying this and not up to speed. We've got a two-week international break coming up. So would it have been worthwhile just to have that momentum and then sub them off after 60 minutes? I, I, yeah, I get where you're coming from. I mean, when you look at Ishmael, he came in. Uh, he had a look at side squad, knew what he were working with, addressed it, this is formation we're playing, this is the direction what we're playing, this is the style we're going to play, bang. And he did what we had to do, we kept us up, went on a right run and ended up in playoffs. You can't just change a complete different style of format, the same players, if them players are not comfortable in that position, what's, what's the point of playing that player out of position? You're just going to get caught with your pants down, you're just going to get shown up showing up which ain't great so yeah good point Jonathan mate good point right then guys and girls uh, anybody watching out there um gonna be wrapping it up now I appreciate everyone who what's been on uh from bottom of my heart it means a lot please like uh subscribe leave your comments um everything you know it, it all else in I know if I keep on about algorithms and all that, but it just helps us uh, be noticed and more we can, the more content we can get out there. And make it just basically just make it for your guys. Banter, debate, uh, things get said, uh, we have a discussion about it. I try and read every one. Uh, I try and ask your questions back and try and get feedback so it works both ways. But yeah, like his Facebook page, uh, messages. Oh, oh, really? Oh, football related. We'll get back to you. Um, me, Luke Goddard. Um, so we try, you know, we're trying best we can to keep the content flowing and that. And it's hard going international break, and that's another thing we could discuss. Could be if I do one on Friday, we could have a discussion about uh, England. Yeah, and that could be another debate. I know it's like Tax TV and Bart Barnsley, but one day, who knows? We could have another John Stones. Um, so yeah, appreciate you all. Thank you for tuning in, taking part. Uh, each and every one of you means a lot, a love a lot. One thing to say, you reds. <laughs>